head's not in the frame anymore. You gotta get your head in the frame. Somebody open the door. It's not a real fire. It can't burn you. Think fireside. Jack! Hey, 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 everybody. It's Tracy here from Beyond Obedience, your canine human relationship coach. And it is time once again for fake fireside chats with Tracy and Rue. Today on Fake Fireside Chats, we are on our final episode in our 10-part series, 10 Things That You Can Do To Significantly Improve Your Relationship With Your Dog. I'm going to use my cheat sheets. Number 10 was be there. Number 9, be with. Number 8, follow the dog. Number 7, ask the dog. Number 6 was an exercise called be quiet. Number 5, watch your language. Number four, listen to your dog. Number three, play to your dog's strengths. Last week was number two, and we talked about the importance of advocating for your dog, not allowing every Tom, Dick, and Harry to come up and pet your dog. And now finally, this week, we're talking about the number one thing that you can do to significantly improve your relationship with your dog. The number one thing to all things relationships. And that, my friends, is to practice being a great leader for your dog. And if you will, humor me for a second. I'm going to take an insert out of my very own book, Living Beyond Obedience, a Different Approach to Living with Dogs. And I wrote here that when we're talking about dogs, I always like to think of leadership in the form of guidance. As in, I have to guide this creature through humansville. In Humansville, we have very seemingly arbitrary rules that make no sense to the canines. Rules like, pee outside, but don't pee inside. Chew this toy that looks like a shoe, but don't chew an actual shoe. Chew this wooden stick outside, but don't chew my wooden table leg. You get my point. I mean, when you think about it, how do the dogs get along so well with us anyway? When you consider that they are a completely different species, canines, living amongst people, primates, it seems only reasonable that we should include guidance in the form of leadership to our canine friends, right? But what does it mean to be a leader to your dog? Well, you have to be somebody worth following. And I want you to take a moment to let that sink in for a minute. Are you somebody worth following? following. What makes you somebody worth following? Trust. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But it isn't always that way. For your dog to trust to you, you have to be calm and predictable. You have to be able to handle all stressful situations without getting stressed out. Isn't that simple anymore, is it? Today in our busy, stressed out lives, we unknowingly lose trust with our dogs. Had a bad day at the office? Are the kids driving you crazy? Money drama causing you stress? Hey, I get it. Heck, I'm living it. But understanding how our stressful lives and emotions can affect our trustworthiness, we can see the deficits we are creating in our relationships with our dogs. And awareness is the first step to real change. So there you have it, my friends. That is, and it concludes, our 10 things that you can do to significantly improve your relationship with your dog. I hope you've enjoyed this 10-part series. I know I have enjoyed sharing it with you, Rue as well. If you have any questions or comments about the 10 things you can do to significantly improve your relationship with your dog, please feel free to comment below. And we'll see you next time on Fake Fireside! Jack! Hey there, dog lover. Are you interested in learning more about how to create an even better relationship with your dog? Consider joining Relationship Remedy online. 
visit www.beyondobedience.ca slash relationship dash remedy for more details. And I hope to see you there. Cheers.